So I'm currently stood in my hallway and over a year ago, about a year and a half ago, this used to be the access to the kitchen, but I never had much space for kitchen worktops. And eventually we thought we'd block it up. And it's been breeze blocks. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, it looked like this. And it just looked dreadful. And we'd been thinking of all sorts of ways on how to cover it up. But the first thing I had to do was plaster it. And I got a quote in for three spaces like this for over £300 plus some cables and I know that my parents usually pay someone about 80 quid a wall or other people have told me it's 120 quid for a day for a plasterer and I knew this wasn't that great value so I have plastered a couple of times before this was my fourth time so I'm just going to show you how I did it I'm definitely not a pro in fact I don't know anybody who just magically knows how to do it it always looks easier I think than it really is I'd love to take a course but that is just a pipe dream and to be honest, I think it takes years of practice anyway. So keep on watching if you want to learn how I did it somehow. So something that I remembered my father-in-law taught me when he helped tile our bathroom for us was if you are going to put tiles or things like that on a wall, when it comes to plastering, you don't have to get it bang on perfect. As long as it's roughly flat and level, you should be all right because you can start building it up in places. And I knew this was perfect for the 3D wall panels that I had planned. So I started off removing everything from the wall, including the nail and raw plug that was there. And I had this quite deep hole. And I also had to fill a gap in the corner on the opposite wall as well. And to make sure I was plastering on a sound surface, I made sure I pulled away anything loose or brittle, just to give any of my hard work a better chance of staying in place. And then I completely washed the whole wall. And luckily I didn't have to plaster right to the top. It was just up until where the door used to be. And I wanted to make sure there were no dust or anything there as well. And then as an extra measure, I gave the whole thing a good rub down with a wire brush. And that was again to remove any loose bits because it was a painted surface and to help the plaster adhere better. And you might notice it was probably a better idea to hold off the washing the wall until after this stage because I had to do it again. But uh, I hadn't done this for a long time. And then here's me washing it again. So the next stage, which I've always been told is very important, is to create a PVA solution. And that I believe, again, is to fix anything loose into place. And so using an empty milk bottle, I just poured a little bit of glue into it and then added water. Now I've read all sorts of things of what ratio this should be, so I really always do it by eye. But please comment below of what part water, what part glue you think it should be. But I was always told it should be a milky solution. So I just put the lid on and gave it a good shake. And then using a clean brush, I just gave the whole surface a good coating of it and then I left it to dry. So then it was time to make the plaster and it's really best to get a rough guide of what it says on the back of the packet and I used one coat here. It's stuff that I already had. It is dearer than normal plaster but I knew I didn't have to make any browning or anything like that. So I think this is very useful for a beginner. And I had to cover roughly about two square meters but don't take this word for word. I ended up aiming for about 6.24 litres of water with 12 kilograms of plaster. But it was a really, really hot day and I found the drill that actually took the mixing stick, whatever you call it, was broken. So I ended up having to mix this by hand and I was really worried because of the heat that it would dry out much quicker. So I ended up using less than that. So you're more than welcome to recommend to future viewers what it should be for two square meters. But because my surface was quite uneven, some places were deeper than others, I just wanted to make a bit more than I probably needed. But what you can't see here is I'd already made sure that I'd added water to the mixing bucket first and then slowly added the plaster and I ended up having to stir it by hand. But it just got to the point where I just really couldn't steer it without the proper tools. But you can do this without it if you're doing patch plastering and stuff. And then using a bucket trowel, that's the only thing that I had, I just glided it on as smooth as I could and just did my absolute best at making sure it was as level as possible. The other thing to really know is that if you have any areas that are so deep, you really should be building it up over time rather than just trying to plaster it all in one go. But I didn't necessarily do that. I had to wait longer for mine to dry. And I haven't quite mastered the whole leave it to set a bit and spray it with water and go over it with a trowel to smooth it. But for the purpose of my wall panels, I just left it to dry completely because I knew I could go over it later with a sander. It just didn't have to look really pretty. So it's definitely not perfect, but it's done. So it's now been just over a week that I've left it to dry and today I'm actually going to sand the whole thing 
give it a coating with a PVA solution and then add a skirting board at the bottom and then maybe fill some areas that I need to, I've got a feeling I do in this corner and then start gluing the 3D wall panels which I'm looking forward to because at the moment it's not looking its best and I want to see a huge transformation. So after a week of letting it dry completely because I had other jobs that I was juggling with I just went over the whole surface with a hand sander just to remove any lumps and bumps and because I knew I'd have a film of dust everywhere I made sure I wore a mask for this. So that's what I'd look like with grey hair. And then once it was smooth I gave the whole surface a final coat of PVA solution because when it came to gluing the panels on later, I didn't want it to be too porous for the glue that I was gonna use. And although I didn't show it, I did add a little bit of filler in some of the areas I wasn't quite happy with, and then gave it a final sand. So hopefully that's given some of you some confidence on just giving something like this a go yourself. I didn't need it to be absolutely bang on perfect because I was just gonna put some tiles on there anyway. As long as it was just roughly smooth, then I was happy with that. But if you do things differently, please comment below, because I always read comments below anyway on anybody's tutorials, just to see what is the right method to do and tips on what not to do. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Thanks for watching, bye.